behind it. It's so cool. Oh, how cool is that? Y'all did such an amazing job for real. Oh, we, we saw y'all at the dip dog, and it's like, this is just awesome. Y'all care if we take pictures? Go for it. Yep. We need the Instagram so we can be like, tag us. Yes. Oh. This is just amazing. Y'all need, need to put this on TikTok, Instagram. Every place. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Yeah, y'all have a wonderful day. Happy Halloween. For today's cup of coffee, Kid and I are stalking turnips. For, yeah, yeah. Because we're going to do old school. Old school Halloween. Totally, completely. Turnip this is not the turnip section. No, but this is just a smattering. Walmart was wiped out. Yeah. They were wiped out of Halloween shit. Yeah, totally. They got rutabagas. They don't got turnips. They have about three. Three turnips. Three. Oh, God. We're, we're in the lion of food right now. We can carve a face out of that. A rutabaga is very, very dense. And that's not. Oh, wait. There's the other ones. That one's kind of withered. The shrunken heads. Shrunken heads. We can make shrunken heads out of these. That's past its prime. But for what we're using it for, maybe. Maybe. Shrunken heads. What did you find? I'm telling you, shrunken heads. This is one of them. That one's going home with us. I mean, the city of food. They have a much better selection of turnips. Yes. Yes. We're sharing uh, the joy in carving the pumpkins. That's what we're doing. What did I do with the thing? I don't, I don't know. This. Wait, wait, wait. I just, yeah. These are the best things ever invented. Right? Right? And They're awesome. I'm sure all our people know how to carve a damn pumpkin. Oh, they do. But it's like, if you key the back of it, mm -hmm. you don't have to struggle to put the lid back on. No. Sample A. <laughs> so we going we're gonna clean out pumpkins. Yes. Pumpkin carving time. These are great too. They are. What we found we found this kit on sale years ago. Where was it? Target? Maybe. But they they're actually sturdy. They're not the janky ones. No, they ain't the janky ones. They're the good ones. We got them on sale the day after. Mm -hmm. That's when you got to get it. Because that's what we do. Yes. So we haven't gotten to the turnip. This this, this cup of coffee is going to be all over the place. It is, but that's okay. Is is all right. Yeah. Because we cleaning we cleaning the pumpkins. Yes. Yes. That that's it. Then we're gonna have like fifteen thousand small sections. Fifteen thousand small sessions that you can edit together, and it's okay. Yes, the editing I love is it. Good. We think that the farmers have understood. Leave stem. Yep. Because it's gorgeous. And if I can get the top off of it, look at that. And kid found out because we also had janky set. Don't buy the cheap shit. Yeah, how'd that happen? You get what you pay for. I think this one came from Walmart. Like, th th 
This is sad. That is sad. Oh. Don't get the cheap shit. Oh. But, yeah. He liked the... I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, this is more... Shoot, show down in here. Oh, well, it's... it's... That's a different type of pumpkin than what I just carved. This is more, in some ways, it almost looks like a mushmelon or a cantaloupe. Yeah. Maybe it was bred hybrid. Oh, you know it's a hybrid. This is for the people that don't like to clean pumpkins. <laughs> and so they make it easier for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weenie friendly pumpkin. So. But this has got a weird texture to it. It's almost spongy, and I'm not sure that I like it. Sounds weird. It does sound weird. Doesn't sound like typical pumpkin scrape. No, it doesn't sound like the other one that I cleaned out at all. And maybe it's just, I don't know. You can see the other ones right here. Yes, I zoomed around while the thing was on zoom. So you get double zoom. I hope I didn't just totally fuck that up. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright. Because it, even as far as using the tool, you have to use the tool differently. Oh yeah. Spaghetti squash. It does sort of look like spaghetti squash. And that other one honestly looked like a loofah sponge. If you've ever seen a loofah sponge. Like, look at that. Spaghetti yeah, squash. Yeah, that one does look like spaghetti squash. The other one was totally different in texture also. The fuck? So we've got a whole variety. That ain't normal. No. That does look like spaghetti squash. But that other one looked like a loofah sponge. Yeah, who knows what these, what kind of pumpkins these are. We have GMO pumpkins, and it's okay because we enjoy them anyhow. But this is weird. It is weird. Showing the aftermath. Showing the semi aftermath. We're still in the process. Yes. Yes. Hers looks way better than mine. No, that's not so. It is so. So these are pumpkin pals. Pumpkin pals. This was kind of, how many hours of work? I mean, it wasn't that long. It was just like. It just seemed that long. Maybe, maybe in two hours at the most. Maybe. I mean, I was done with mine really quick. He, he does. He works so fast and they look so good. No, they don't. They look cheap. And I'm just old and slow. So what we're going to do next is old school turnips they won't take as long kids looking kind of horrified they? or will they yeah yeah uh -huh. Turnip. <laughs> Turnips. i was very pleased with how these turned out and on halloween night when they're lit they're gonna look awesome yours looks nice yours always looks good my thumbnail that I used, that was one of kids' pumpkins. It's based off a of pumpkin bag. I don't care who it's based off of. It's awesome. And I love it. And I've used it for years. So, I'll be back in just a second. Next victims. Turnips. We have no idea what we're doing. And they're not, But we're going to do something. And they're not the big, big turnips. No, but they just look big, big. Tell us I'm up close. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how this turns out. Yeah. Here you go, folks. Turnip carvings. Kids turned out great. Yours is adorable. I love yours. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it looks like a podling. It does look like a podling. Oh my god, I've carved podlings. And I will tell you, carving the turnips was a whole lot easier than I thought it would be. It was a whole lot easier than carving a pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to have another little section on this, and we're going to show you a plaster cast of an more of an original carved turnip. One of those big turnips. Yeah. There we go. So we hope that you all have enjoyed the vegetable carving. Yes. And yes. what we will do on November 1st is we will show them because we're recording this on October the 30th. Mm -hmm. But doesn't her turn turnip look like a podling? <laughs> it just looks sad. It doesn't look sad. It looks the like a podling. Kids, kids looks great. We will. He says he's going to. Not right now. Try to carve the face before Halloween it out because we did pumpkin style as far as we went ahead and hollowed out the turnips, which they're remarkably kind of flimsy. That they are once you hollow them out. Yeah. And so wanted to go over a little bit of the history. And there's a really cool article on Smithsonian Magazine. And this was written by uh, Jennifer Nilowicki, I think is how you pronounce that. Nilowicki. And it was October the 22nd of 2021. Of course it was. <laughs> of course. And it's a really good article. And not only is, is it a very well-written article, which gives a nice summation of the traditions of Halloween, but it has a video in there. It does. It does. And it's way cool. Mm -hmm. And um, there are so many people, there's so much negativity, er, there's so much bullshit that surrounds the celebration of Halloween. Mm -hmm. It's like anything else. It's what you choose to make of it. Yeah. And yes. so I, this was cool because in, in Gaelic, the word is Sawain. I think I've pronounced that if I've mispronounced it because Gaelic is a very difficult why don't they spell stuff phonetically? I mean, don't honestly. Know. I wish they did. But it simply means summer's end. Yeah, that's all it means. That simple. And that it says it kicks off at sundown on October the 31st and continues through November the 1st, which we know. And it ushered in the transition from the autumn equinox to the winter solstice. And that occurs, I do believe that's December the 21st. Oh. Yeah. And it's interesting because it, it's the return of the light. The days slowly start getting longer. I, I'm not a fan of, of summer, you know, uh, solstice. But I love winter solstice. And Kid and I usually go out and raise a glass of wine and, and just toast the return of the light. Mm -hmm. That's just, see, this is what you do. Make traditions amongst your family. And it says, during those two days, the ancient Celts believed that the veil between life and death was at its narrowest. And we can see how that would be. Mm -hmm. And that it allowed spirits to roam freely between the realms. And the Celts approached this turning point with both anticipation and dread, fearing that they would unknowingly cross paths with wayward fairies, monsters, or ancestral spirits. And then a particularly ominous entity was Stingy Jack. And we'll get to that here in just a moment. And um, the picture that we're showing is a ghost turnip. And it's a plaster cast, which was dated to around the turn of the 20th century. And, of course, it was close to disintegration. I don't know if that meant the original turnip. <laughs> oh, God. Because turnips, if it, they, they, they start to smell. Turnips smell when they fresh. Yeah. That was what kid is like. Damn, it stinks. It, it smells like a turnip. It's like it is a turnip. I mean, like, He's yep. not a fan. Yep, that's that's. Turnip smell. <laughs> He's not a fan of the turnips. I, no, no. But what he's really saying is They're that... They're good for carving, though. Yeah, they are good for carving. 
that this is a tradition in Ireland that's going away. Carving the turnips? Uh Uh-huh. No. No. Keep that tradition alive. Absolutely keep that tradition alive. And so it's one of those that... um, found another article that was on history.com and the links will be in the description box and this is by the history.com editors and it was originally october 25th of 2019 was updated october the 16th of 2023 and i don't why do people put everything in caps it bothers me when they put everything in caps it's, smith it's like the, did not it's like the writing the written version of yelling it is but now the Smithsonian, I will say that the article was very well done, and I appreciated that. But this one they have from to be. it's the Smithsonian, yeah, yeah, right. You expect more from them, yeah. It's not like these journalists that are like writing for the Star, Just janky. Well, yeah, they're janky. <laughs> <laughs> they are that cheap little pumpkin salve. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the journalism world, the one that little bits. <laughs> Flimsy saw. Uh, but here on History.com, they have a nice abbreviated version of the legend of Stingy Jack. And uh, it says that people have been making jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween for centuries, and one version of the practice may have originated from an Irish legend, which first appeared in print in the 19th century about a man nicknamed Stingy Jack. And according to the story, Stingy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him. True to his name, Stingy Jack didn't want to pay for his drink, so he convinced the devil to turn himself into a coin that Jack could use to buy their drinks once the devil did so jack decided to keep the money and put it in his pocket next to a silver cross which prevented the devil from changing back into his or its original form because <laughs> i figure this must have been a minor demon because it wouldn't uh, the, uh, the devil himself would not be that damn dumb i mean that's like the ones that... the sack the sack yeah. the yeah. ones that got into the sack yeah <laughs> and says Jack eventually freed the devil under the condition that he would not bother Jack for one year and that should Jack die, he would not claim his soul. The next year, Jack again tricked the devil into climbing a tree to pick a piece of fruit. And while the devil was up the tree, Jack carved a sign of the cross into the tree's bark so that the devil could not come down again until the devil promised Jack not to bother him for 10 more years. So, you know, this must be particularly dumb devil. Just a little bit. And soon after that, Jack died. And as the legend goes, God would not allow such an unsavory figure into heaven. And the devil, upset by the trick Jack had played on him and keeping his word not to claim his soul, would not allow Jack into hell. Although I question, I question that a little bit. How would that be unsavory to God? Because I figured God would get a kick out of that. Well, you know, this is just the legend. I I think that it was rather amusing. Yeah. It says that uh, the devil sent Jack off into the dark night with only a burning coal to light his way. Jack put the coal into a carved out turnip and has been roaming the earth with it ever since. And the Irish began to refer to his ghostly figure as Jack of the Lantern. Which became Jack O' Lantern. Yeah. And says that the story uh, likely drew a parallel from the term Jack O' Lantern is akin to Will O' Wisp, or Will of the Wisp, mm-hmm. which is a mysterious light seen in the wooded and swampy areas at night, sometimes with natural causes, other times as a result of mischievous children lighting lanterns. I think it was like swamp gas or something like that, wasn't it? I've never seen a Will of the Wisp. I have no idea if it was Swamp Gas or not. But I'd it's like, supposed to be I, blue. I really don't know. It's supposed to be blue. It's probably some kind of methane or something yeah. like that that's, that yeah. lights. I don't know. It's not ball lightning. 
No, that no, it's not. That's a, pl- that's a plasma. That's a plasma. Something is just like no, get away from that. Yeah. And in Ireland and Scotland, people began to make their own versions of Jack's lanterns by carving scary faces into the turnips and placing them in the windows or near doors to frighten away the stingy Jack and other wandering evil spirits. In England, large beets were used, which I found very interesting. Yeah. How do you and carve if you, a beet? well, the same it, way that you would carve the other ones, but except that your hands would be stained red for days. Look like you murdered someone. Yeah, really. <laughs> if you've never, if you've never processed beets, which they're wonderful, I used to love to can beets. You can use them to dye natural fabrics. Yes, and they will dye natural hands. You have red hands for days. It says that immigrants from these countries brought their vegetable carving traditions with them when they came to the United States, helping change American pumpkin carving from a general autumn pastime to one uniquely associated with Halloween, which I found fascinating. So they were already carving pumpkins over here just for autumn, I guess that's you know, for some of the people that don't want to do the spoopy faces or whatever, that they were just, you know, who knows, leaves or something like that, acorns, squirrels. So they were already doing that. Yeah. And now that it's just associated with Halloween. Yeah. But I thought that was just really, really cool. I thought, I think it is. Because that's how it, I think it's neat. Yeah. And it's like, People make it into something that it's not. And as far as the Druids doing all this stuff, well, folks, the Druids had no written records. So if somebody tells you that they knew exactly what the Druids were doing, I would that's one of those Spock raised eyebrows on that because how did they know? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that people need to have that Spock raised eyebrow these days about. It's like, how do you know? Mm-hmm. But we hope that everyone has an absolutely wonderful Halloween and that you enjoyed our little misadventures and carving the root vegetables. Yes. So, kid, final thoughts. <laughs> Did y'all carve one? Did y'all carve a turnip? Yeah. Did y'all carve a jack o' lantern? Yeah, that would be great. Now, I'll tell you something. If you want to send us pictures of your jack o' lanterns or something like that, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com and i can make a video of everybody's but now put specifically in the body of the email that i have permission to use your picture yeah you need we need like explicit explicit permission yeah. not not be like fuck you you use my thing not that kind of explicit permission <laughs> but like yes you can use it yes and then that would be great to make a, you know, put that in other videos to share with everybody else. If you've had experiences with the paranormal or supernatural encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big, big. Same, same email address there. Yeah. And the links and the email, all that's in the description box. Mm-hmm. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads. Thank you all and have a good know that you're very loved and yes. we will show pictures of the lit vegetables on november the first mm-hmm. because again with old school I, I don't light them until halloween night <laughs> yeah because it's like then I, we actually don't want the possums and the raccoons eating them before halloween they, they'll tear their will do faces that. off they will tear their faces off yeah so <laughs> know that you're very loved and lord willing we'll see you on the next cup yeah. bye